diseases in men, especially andrology and urology uh, diseases in men, and we focus on male infertility and sexual dysfunction. Quickly moving on to our talk on testicular vein ligation, we would like to talk about uh, what aspects of uh, testicular vein ligation are important currently and how you should go about it. So, uh, the treatment of testicular vein ligation is essentially used for varicocele and infertility and that is something which is well known to us. There are indications for use in adolescents with varicocele. Pain is an unusual indication for doing this procedure in less than 10% of men and then there are some controversial indications whether it can be used with differential testicular size, whether to improve leadic cell function and more recently with men with normal semen parameters and sperm DNA abnormalities. We will uh, want to limit our talk to varicocele and infertility and uh, I'll touch on some of the other aspects uh, through my talk. Uh, we know this uh, essentially abnormally tortuous, elongated and dilated uh, pampiniform plexus and, and again I am not going too much into the etiology of this but we will talk about what the common causes are and it, it, it is known that it is an essential cause of male infertility in men. 15% of men in general population will have it and up to 30% uh, with primary infertility and almost 3 fourth of men with secondary infertility will have associated varicocele as a cause. It is common along the left side. Um, isolated uh, right varicoceles are extremely uncommon. Usually right varicoceles will occur as bilateral varicoceles. And, uh, and what that does is that it is going to result in increased testicular temperature and then the uh, pathology of it leading to decreased leydig cell secretory function, decreased intratestricular testosterone, decreased spermatogenesis, decreased sperm concentrations, increased ROS activity which again is going to cause DNA damage and decreased uh, circulatory cell function leading to reduced sperm motility and essentially when you are looking at reduced sperm concentration, sperm motility, increased DNA fragmentation, you are going to look at a reduction in the male reproductive potential of this patient. Uh, all that is relatively known to us. The problem is what to do with it, when to do with it, do you operate on varicoceles, do you operate on one side or both sides, are you going to operate on a varicocele that is going to be diagnosed by ultrasound only, what can you predict in terms of results, how soon can you predict those results, how are you going to your counsel your patients regarding that. A lot of questions. If a patient has severe OATS or azospermic, are you going to advise him to have varicocele surgery? Is the size of the testes important to assess when you are going to advise varicocele surgery to this patient or not? So, so many factors that you can think of with the varicocele which are still very confounding. So, we will we'll try to answer some of these questions today. So, we will start with when to operate which means what are the indications. This is relatively well defined. So, what the AUA and the American Society of Reproductive Medicine says is that when it is clinically palpable, the couple has infertility. There is a difference between duration of infertilities as defined by the American uh, councils and the European guidelines. The American Reproductive uh, Society for Medicine says uh, a one year infertility is enough, whereas the European guidelines wait for two years before they define this infertility. The female partner has to be correctable or is, is normal and at least one semen parameter is abnormal. This also is uh, slightly different between different societies and there are certain societies which now say semen abnormalities including advanced semen function, sperm function tests. So that's an inclusion that's coming into some of the uh, guidelines that are being formed more recently. So that's the European guideline and they've mentioned uh, a duration of waiting for longer than two years and unexplained infertility and the report on varicocele and infertility they have gone ahead in their parameters and they have actually mentioned normal uh, female factors which include consideration of age and ovarian reserve. So certain uh, adjustments in different uh, societies but more or less the indications remain same and uh, the bottom line from all of these indications is actually understanding that this is clinical varicocele that they are talking about they are not talking about subclinical varicoceles which means that if you do not palpate or do not uh, see a clinical varicocele, you do not feel impulse or reflux 
when you examine a patient for varicocele, you do not send him for ultrasound to prove that he has a varicocele and then operate him. He is a candidate not for ultrasound, he is a candidate not for treatment. So that uh, only when you find a clinical varicocele do you uh, look for either a subclinical on the opposite side if you feel an impulse or a reflux or to uh, substantiate your clinical finding before surgery you can get an ultrasound done in such a case. The other question is, uh, do we go ahead with bilateral surgery uh, if you have a unilateral varicocele which is clinical on one side and when you sent this patient for ultrasound, it came back with a report that there was subclinical varicocele on the opposite side. So this is interesting because it's important to what side the subclinical varicocele is. Usually, if the subclinical varicocele has been detected on the left side, it's far less uh, common that you will get benefits after surgery. Whereas if this subclinical varicocele is on the right side or if you felt a reflux or an impulse on the right side, it makes a lot of sense to operate because the outcomes are better. So again, uh, a variety of studies which have been done and they have shown that if you have a moderate large left varicocele and a subclinical right varicocele, there was improvement in sperm parameters, especially if you have demonstrated reflux in these patients. So it makes sense then to do a bilateral varicocele repair even in the presence of one-sided subclinical varicocele and you will see improvement in semen quality pregnancy rates in the bilateral group. The other question always my patients will always ask me is when do I do my next semen report? When will I see the improvement? So, uh, again, a lot of studies done and they've shown that the maximal improvement is usually by three months and you can wait for another three months after that. It will not improve after that. So, this is the, the time period that you want to give to your patients to test their semen. Now, the problem is, uh, if you've used, and I'll come to what techniques or procedures have been used, if you used procedures that are associated with higher recurrence rates, those are usually going to start happening by about 12 months. So you want to actually tell your patient after doing the varicoselectomy to try really hard in that 12 months because that's his best chance. And when the recurrence sets in, all those, all those problems are going to set in again. And if you've done a laparoscopic procedure or if you've done a procedure which is not microsurgical, you'll have fairly high recurrence rates, even recurrence rates as high as 20-25%. So you're going to